we are about to reinforce this bulkhead and if you can see Shane has spent the morning routering out the foam and he's going to reinforce this little piece of bulkhead here and I'm going to grab him because he can explain it a bit more engineery than I can. Got my bar karate going as well. It's a bar karate off <laughs> this morning, catching up on uh, two weeks worth of stuff. This one up here. So, am I right in saying that we are creating a I beam here? Uh, Is this the the process? Not quite. Yeah, not this, essentially this an I beam because it's not I shaped. But yes, we're creating. Um, a, a, a webbed beam. Okay, and why is it important to do it on... Why do we need to do it here? Because, because it's such a small... Well, one, yes, it's a small section, but also it's uh, on the outboard side with a lot of hull panel that it's got to support. So, because I thought it's such a small section that this is this is just stabilising this here and then supporting these beams here, right? Yes, is is a one way of thinking about it. Yes. So awesome. the because the depth of the beam is quite small, so the depth of the beam is from the hull to this edge. We've got to put a lot of strong material on this edge here to um, create the beam. So it comes down to very basic beam theory of you've got two, two ways of creating stiffness and strength in a beam. You can either make the beam really deep and not require much material at either end, or you can make the beam shallow and put a lot of material at the top and the bottom. So this section here is a big deep beam. Yeah, because it's massively deep, it doesn't require. So we're not going to do the same unidirectional fiber in this one. Correct. Because it's a much bigger space span. Than uh, this no, here. not span, a much deeper beam. Much deeper. Span is different. Okay, so that's okay. So bringing up span is a good one as well because the span is how long the beam is, okay? So that's from, let's, let's make it easy that the span is from the top corner of the deck up there down to the floor. So the span is really long. It's like nearly, oh, it's two and a bit meters of very shallow. So the beams require, stiffness requirements are pretty high. Uh, whereas on the other side, if you look 
On the other side, we've got a shallow beam, but it's only this long. So because the span is pretty short, it also means that the requirement for the beam is not very high. So when you're talking about beams, there's three major inputs. One is the stiffness and strength of the material. The second is the depth of the, the beam. And the third is the length of the span. So as one increases, the requirements for the others have to adjust to meet uh, the requirements so that the beam does its job. Difference between this and edge capping? Now the edge cap capping ties the two skins together, whereas this uni creates longitudinal strength up and down. Right, the two skins is this side and that side. And so Correct. your edge capping is just wrapping. And usually on Pikea we're doing, our edge capping would be the same thickness as whatever the skin is. And then our overlap is about, for edge capping is about 50 mil. Yeah. Muscle mass. So, this side needs routering out, which Shane had already done and I didn't film. But putting that unidirectional fibre in, you've come up with some engineering number as to how much yeah, unidirectional so you, you put in there. Um, so you have two requirements. You have a uh, deflection requirement, so how much you allow the beam to bend okay so because it's going to bend if, if you get a wave or the dock push on the outside of the hull here mm -hmm. it's going to push against this beam so you set a requirement and say i don't want the beam to deflect more than x amount of millimeters okay so that's your first requirement that's a stiffness requirement once you've defined that it also helps define the strength requirement so that then looks at when that beam deflects that far, it pulls in tension on these unis and compresses the um, ear glass on the outside because it's a, when the beam's put into bending, you end up with one side of tension, one inside in compression. So then you look at the material to make sure that it can handle the tension and compression loads. So that's the major defining requirements for it. And then you can adjust the depth, the length, and the amount of material to meet those requirements. All right, so are you gonna now put, um, is there a few yeah, bits? Yeah, uh, we're gonna, it's gonna now, be 100% covered now. Uh, so this is, um, we're gonna consolidate just with the tape. Yeah. Uh, there's, I suppose you could put it under a vacuum bag, but it, there's no, it's not worth it. This, a lot of faffing around for nothing. Cheaper and easier <coughs> to do and faster to do this. Quite a long way. Tapes really quick, not worried about any sticky residue left because we can sand all that off before we bog it. Mm. But we got the tape that doesn't leave residue either, so. Shane hated this tape when I first got it. Yeah. Why did you get this tape, Anna? This is the worst tape in the world. It's rubbish. I want the blue tape. Oh, the green tape. I can't green remember. Tape. He wanted some other type of tape. And now this is like liquid gold. This is the best tape ever. The kids aren't allowed to touch it. Yeah, it works really well with polyester. <laughs> okay, well that was going to be my other point to make is resin systems, but polyester resin, fiberglass, doesn't need to be any more than that. It's a fiberglass and polyester boat, so. Yeah, it's horses for courses in certain areas, you know. Yeah, it could do it out of carbon and epoxy. The value of that is, is not high enough to, or warrantable enough. You know, I can do it with polyester and a water glass in here to achieve the same thing. So yeah, it becomes a cost versus performance versus time and availability of stuff as well. You know, time, uh, availability of materials is not always possible with places that you're working. 
So to get some materials, can be a pain. So there's a lot, a lot of considerations always that need to be taken into account. Okay, so you're going to do all this, and then once that's gone off, edge cap the entire thing. Yep. Ah, sh. I didn't put the inserts for the um, door in there. Uh. You're gonna have to router it out now. Yeah, I got to. Uh, so I. So what I've got to do now is I'll router out the skin, uh, put the plate in, and then when the tape edge cap goes over it, it deals with it. Um, That's not the way to do it. No. Do we do we need a door? Yeah, it's Aiden's. Yeah, because there'll be complaints that I stay up late at night working on stuff and the long Yeah, but aren't we putting that sliding door uh, in there? Yeah. Well, we we have this discussion well, often because yeah, but you don't right. you don't want any more doors than what you need because doors, doors are heavy. Ass. So um, yeah. So do so we're not going to bother. All right, do we just do the run? Yeah, we could just run the fabric doors mm. if the kids want their separation from each so, other. Yeah, we have to do a, a solid door. Right where you guys are, like got you on the uh, bulkhead of the bathroom. So there's gonna be a door there, solid door. But hmm. I don't know it might be worth asking Aiden what he wants. So it's certainly worth a couple of more coats of thinking. Okay, so let's take you and let's go have a closer look at what Shane's done. Okay, so that is our consolidated unidirectional inside the door frame. All the way down to the floor. Yeah. So we've still got the new floor to install in Ada's room too, don't we? Mm-hmm. And then, then this bulkhead section is also laminated into the floor, which then sort of becomes a lot more structurally solid, I guess, isn't it? The unidirectional has been put in this room here and now Shane has managed to edge cap all of that. So he runs it from, is that 50 mil Shane? All the way round to the other side. And it is all the way round the doorway. So good job. What's the next plan? Oh, next we're going to go and fill in Harry's hatch in his room. Smile for the camera. 